what we've done today, uh, we've continued our proximity analysis. Um, we've kept the dependencies pretty much the same. We've installed matplotlib. We've brought in a little bit of extra data here, the t um, building footprints. We made our code a little bit more generic um, so that we could apply this same analysis to different cities. Um, we changed the code to use the OpenStreetMap identifier internally. That's setting us up later to be able to join the data back. Um, we can split it out, uh, run um, analysis, uh, like finding the building centroids and things, and then join it back together when the time comes. Um, there's 16,000 uh, building footprints in this kind of clipped area around the city of Tampere. To find the centroids is actually surprisingly easy. We just pointed to... Um, the GeoPandas uh, geometry series and ask for the centroid for each one of those. And it returns a geo series. So now we have this building centroid geo series. This buffer is, what is the same. We essentially took all of the food sources around Tampere and drew a one kilometer buffer around them and then ran the union of those so we have a, a more cohesive shape. The key difference we did today is now we have those the buffer and the building centroids, we can find the buildings within that, um, we'll call it a food catchment, and um, started actually calling it the catchment instead of buffered union, which is a little bit more jargon, jargony. So we took those centroids and just ran a within operation on each of them. Uh, it takes about nine seconds, so it's gonna look for each centroid, each of the 16,000 centroids is gonna look through the whole um, food catchment geometry and see if it's within there. Uh, still surprisingly fast. And we basically then have a series, we needed to give it a name, so the within the food catchment. And at that point we were able to actually join the original buildings data frame, geo data frame, with this new attribute buildings within food um, catchment which now we have a new column. And that column is the basis of our subsequent visualization. And then we can layer analysis by creating uh, columns for buildings that are within a transport uh, radius or buildings that are within, um, you know, walking, walking distance to a school, things like that. Uh, what we've got here is in blue, we see the buildings that are within uh, relatively convenient access to grocery or convenience stores. And the red might be areas that are uh, could be using an intervention. Uh, people are probably going to be more reliant on their cars in those areas. Most everything else in the notebook has stayed the same. So I'm not going to really spin through that. We, one of the main lessons, though, was that once we're starting to work with this much uh, geometric data, particularly these polygons, can be quite complex. Um, Rendering it in the browser in the DOM was really slow. So these processes will likely run on a server uh, in some kind of batch interval, interval, and then they can be used. Um, we're not sure quite. Yeah, I'm not really not able to figure that far out in advance, but some kind of map algebra to combine more or less these Boolean um, mask values for more complicated suitability analysis. And just for point of reference, this GeoTrellis project is what we're looking to. We were probably aiming squarely into getting this, um, our data in the shape for GeoTrellis, but we're just trying to keep the dependencies to a minimal right now and the development environment really simple. But if you go to geotrellis.io, uh, you can see some demos, including um, demos where they're um, doing more or less uh, large scale analysis of um, to support the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and some other pretty powerful types of analysis. We're largely working in Java so far, I mean in Python so far, and GeoTrellis is <coughs> I think written in Java or Scala. Uh, but nonetheless, we can build on it as a service, integrate it into our architecture if need be. But essentially, yeah, so for example, if you're wanting to live in a neighborhood with a high access to uh, grocery stores and rail stops, you know, you can interactively sort of run these analyses, which is the key goal is we don't know what questions people are going to ask. So we want to make it as simple and intuitive for them to do that without having to get 
to these underlying layers of <coughs> you know having to know about joins and um, series and data tables and polygons, multi polygons, and, uh, indexes, and you name it. All this stuff is really secondary and should be abstracted or opaque to the end user. That's our kind of goal right, from a usability standpoint. So yeah, that's it. All of our code is on GitHub, github.com slash sustainable urban design. We have a pull request in progress for the code changes here during that were made during today's live code session. If you want to check it out, here's the link in the chat for what it's worth, as well as on the stream, sustainable urban design app slash pull number 113. And you can see all the files that have changed and will continue to change. We're, we're still working on, I'm still working on this, this task and there's a, few, a couple of notebooks here that you can render. All right, well, if you'd like to get involved with this or other similar projects, stop by codebuddies.org. Codebuddies is a really active community. There's a lot of different study groups and hangouts on a regular basis. I think at least one hangout a day for various um, types of purposes, studying React or geospatial development with Python, Django, things like that. CodeBuddies is also open source. You can get involved with the development of CodeBuddies platform by visiting codebuddies.org, I'm sorry, github.com slash codebuddies, or just the codebuddies.org um, front page has a link to the GitHub repository as well. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Hope you're doing well out there, and have a great day.